Hey guys, so in this short lecture, we will look at how to perform the cranial drawer test. Now, the cranial drawer test is a test to assess the patency of the cranial cruciate ligaments. It is a very common test performed in our orthopedic examination of the hind limb, but it is not as easy to perform as most seasoned veterinarians make it seem. For small virgin hands, I understand this is tough. The key to performing a good cranial drawer test is knowing your anatomical landmarks and some good palpation technique. So in this short lecture, I am hoping to address just that. Let's take a look at this two-dimensional image of the canine stifle joint first to identify the four key anatomical landmarks that you must find to perform a cranial drawer test. First, we have the patella. Next, the lateral fabella. By its location in this image, you can tell that the lateral fabella is located on the caudal portion of the femur. Then we have the tibial tuberosity and the fibula head. Now, if we draw a line between these structures like so, you can appreciate that by identifying the cranial landmarks, which is the patella and the tibial tuberosity, you can then go on to identify the caudal landmarks. They are sort of in the same line as each other. Now we take a look at the live animal image. Before we watch the video, let's identify the location of the cranial landmarks. First, we have the tibial tuberosity, the most cranial and distally located bony landmark of the stifle joint. Then we have the patella, the most cranial and proximal bony landmark of the stifle joint. By identifying these two cranial landmarks, we can identify the other two caudal landmarks by drawing a straight line across the plane and finding the head of the fibula and the lateral fibula on the caudal aspect of the hind limb. So let's go ahead and watch this video now. First, you're going to externally rotate the limb. This just gives you better grip. And then place your fingers on all four of the bony landmarks. The bottom thumb pushes forward and the top index finger pushes backwards. Then what you're going to do is check for cranial drawer motion in a neutral position, a flexed position and an extended position. We can watch the video again. Placing our four fingers on the bony landmark and the bottom thumb pushes forward, top index finger pushes backward. Check in flexion now and then check in extension. So it's important to note that we want to feel for movement in the joint and not the skin. This is sometimes quite tricky in the animal because the dog and cat's skin is quite loose. Um, what you can do is you can try to peel the skin back and hold it steady with your fingers. And initially when you're learning this technique, this can be quite tricky, but keep practicing and you will get the hang of it. In most normal dogs, there is not much laxity at all in the cranial caudal motion of the joint. In dogs with partial ligament rupture, sometimes you will feel like the joint is giving. Uh, to me, I describe it as a capsular tug. In dogs with complete ligament rupture, you will get a nice full cranial drawer as we will see in the next video. In this video, we will have a look at dear Kamalo again, who has chronic bilateral stifle pathology. He had bilateral grade 4 patella luxation. Then after having two surgeries, I would say that now it's a grade 3. So the patella still luxates in and out of the trochlear notch. 
First, I want to show you his very loose patella. Then we will have a look at his cranial drawal response. So let's go ahead and play the video now. The first structure I identify is his thick patella tendon. Then I go ahead and find his patella. You can see that it's really loose. His stifle joint is extremely thick, a lot of periarticular fibrosis. So now we do the cranial drawer response. I reposition my hands, pull the skin back, and that's a very positive drawer response. That's quite painful for him as well. And now I go ahead and check the other side identifying the patella tendon and then the patella. This is the easiest way for me to identify the patella accurately. Positioning my hands. And that's the cranial drawer response right there. So I want to reiterate that you wouldn't get a complete drawer response like that in most dogs. Uh, in dogs with acute injuries and are really painful, they would contract the muscles and it would be difficult for you to elicit a drawer response. In these dogs, it's better off to give them a sedation so that their muscles are nice and relaxed and you can assess the patency of the cruciate ligament then. In other cases where you would not get a full draw response, as mentioned before, is when there is a partial rupture. So in these cases, sometimes you may only feel that there is um, a little bit of joint, stifle joint diffusion. So the delineation of the patella tendon becomes less. It feels a bit squishy in that region. And also you may find that when you extend the stifle joint, the dog may uh, react in pain like Kamalo did on the other side. In other cases with a chronic uh, cranial cruciate ligament rupture, when there's quite severe periarticular fibrosis, there is this huge, thick, um, stiff scar tissue. So you won't be able to get a positive cranial draw response. But generally, um, by the character of the scar tissue, so there's uh, what we call a medial buttressing, which is thickening of the stifle joint on the medial aspect. This is very suggestive of a cruciate ligament injury. So using all this clinical science, we will then um, come to the conclusion that the cruciate ligament is injured and not patent. So I hope this lecture content was useful to you and now you understand how to perform a drawer response. I find it easy to externally rotate the limb and that helps me have a better grip of the stifle joint. If you are a vet nurse and a vet tech and you're working with a veterinarian or if you're a vet student and you're doing placements with a veterinarian, do ask them to show you how to assess the cruciate ligament. It does take time to master the technique, but be patient with yourself and keep practicing. Okay, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out and I'll see you again in the next lecture. Bye!